Hi, Phil Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Today we're going to talk a little bit about front side resistance and how important that is in developing the kind of velocity that you need to command the strike zone with maximum speed. Now, for the thousands of our loyal followers, you all know that I'm a big physics guy. And we've talked a lot in the past of how uh, Newton's third law of motion, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, relates to your drive off the pitching rubber. The creation of momentum, which is simply the sum of energy and mass, by pushing back on that pitching rubber, having the energy from the ground up, ground force reaction we call it, come up through your body and propel you forward toward your target. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Newton's first law of motion, and that is that an object in motion has a tendency to stay in motion unless acted upon by an opposing force. Now, when I was a kid, cars did not have seat belts or airbags or any kind of restraints of that nature, and as a result, it was not really safe driving in a lot of these cars at a a fast speed or even a slower speed, which is why over the years they developed seat belts, airbags, safety barriers on highways and so on and so forth to limit the possibility of serious injury or damage to a vehicle because the vehicle was not prepared with the correct safety measures. If you were driving in a car at 60 miles an hour and you hit a barrier, whatever was inside that car was going through the front of the car at 60 miles an hour. If you were unfortunate enough to be a crash test dummy in the days when they were testing seat belts and airbags and so on and so forth, a car would accelerate to 60 miles an hour and drive right into a brick wall and anything that was in that car would go through the front of the car at 60 miles an hour. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, how is this going to make my fastball faster? Let me explain. When I come off the pitching rubber and I load and I, Newton's third law, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, and I push back hard on that pitching rubber, getting myself to come explosively forward off that pitching rubber, I've now glided about three feet off the pitching rubber, dry foot never left the ground, that's legal, landing in power K, and being able to now deliver my ball from power K position, vertically stacked and balanced, with maximum speed and velocity to my target. Now, I'm much closer to my target because I use that ground force. Newton's third law. Where does Newton's first law come in? For every... For any object that is in motion has a tendency to stay in motion unless acted upon by an opposing force. Now, in the case of those cars where they were testing with crash test dummies by driving a 60 mile an hour vehicle into a brick wall, well, there's your opposing force, the brick wall. So you're going to go from 60 miles an hour to zero miles an hour in a split second. And that's what creates the momentum and the velocity of whatever is inside that car to go flying through the front of the car. Unfortunately, when I get into the eight foot circle in a tournament, I don't have a brick wall to stop my forward momentum from the ground force, from pushing back on that pitching rubber and coming explosively out toward my target. I have to create that opposing force with core and trunk strength and the ability to come explosively forward off that pitching rubber and be able to, boom, stop. Front side resistance. Now from here, this is my, now I've created with the strength in my body that opposing force. That stone wall, it's right here. Can't see it, but it's there. And from here, because I have been moving forward so aggressively, and my hand's been going around in a circle, hopefully 55, 60 miles an hour. When I come past the front of my body, I've got that front side resistance that allows whatever it is in my vehicle, which happens to be my hand, to go powering through the front side 
at the same speed, if not higher, than the movement of my body forward. Now, when they used to do these, when they, you can see them now, when you are driving fast on a highway, if you look at dividers, you'll see that instead of concrete there, they have barrels that are filled with foam or sand. And what happens if you should be unfortunate enough to have your car hit one of those dividers with those barrels? Well, instead of that brick wall situation, where you come off and boom, you stop, you hit that wall, and you go from 60 to zero, you're now going to hit that wall, and you're going to go slowly through the barrels of foam or sand, and you're going to slowly come to a rest where everything inside the vehicle is going to slow down accordingly. Well, that's great for whoever it is that's driving in the vehicle, but not great for windmill pitchers. We want to create that opposing force with really good core and trunk strength so that when we come off that pitching rubber, we are not creating that movement forward that has my hand instead of firing forward to the front side at the same velocity or momentum that I was building driving off that pitching rubber is dragging through the throw zone and coming through the front side much more slowly. So any kind of movement, even athletic movement, is subject to the same laws of nature as that car, as a rocket ship taken up from Cape Canaveral and going to the moon, if you're creating momentum, if you're creating power from the ground up as you move forward off that pitching rubber, you want to create a really, really solid front side. And you do that not by bringing a brick wall with you to sit, set seven, eight feet out from the pitching rubber when you're in a game, but by creating the core and trunk strength necessary to enable you to load and to come explosively off that pitching rubber and land in vertically balanced, perfectly stacked power K position with a firm front side. There's my wall of resistance that enables me to maintain the velocity that my hand speed is building as I come off the pitching. So when it comes to maximizing speed, it's not just about how fast can I move my hand, how fast can I get my dry foot through. It's about being able to create a really, really good front side. Same thing in hitting. If I'm a hitter, and I have a pitch coming in, and I swing at the ball like this with my body drifting forward, my bat head is dragging through the hitting zone and losing velocity. When I put my heel up and heel down, and I get my hip whip, just like in pitching, and I create that firm front side, my bat head is going to go firing down that hitting zone and power that ball over the center field fence. Front side resistance, very, very important. Strength and conditioning, even more important. For great drills on how to develop that front side resistance and hand speed, go to Fast Pitch Power Plus. I hope that this has been useful. Talk to you next time.